Hi all, oh, back with another uh, Ford sales catalog. So this one's a 1983 Escort. Uh, for 83 they all kind of had this like black border on around them. 82 they were kind of like a silver border for depending on, it, depending on the uh, catalog. But uh, it is a full photo disp display across the front and back covers. You see this one's made 8 of 82. And this one depicts a, I believe, GLX, yes. yellow, um, passenger sport mirror, that would be higher trim options, TRX wheels, and then um, full length bumper wraparounds, bumper ends. Um, yeah, it's a 1983 Escort driving home. Driving home world car technology. Okay, I see. Yes. Um, so, 1983, if you didn't know, it's kind of like the the best year of Escorts and EXPs. 1983, both of those cars had the most amount of options ever in one year. And there's, there's plenty to them. Uh, it was the first year for the EFI engines. Uh, first year on record for the 1.6 high output engines um, first year for five speed or the four-door escort had been out for a little while first year for armrests in the uh, between the two front seats um, a number of other small changes but um, but like EXPs, for instance, you could get with colored dashboards, even though Escorts always had that. Uh, so 83 just becomes ultra special. In 84, they start removing some of the options, like they start uh, limiting color, the color palette significantly. Uh, here they display the interior. Yep, like I said, armrests are the new deal. So they're putting those out on display. Intermittent wipers, horn is still on the stock, and uh, in '84 I believe that would change. So '81 to '83 you'll find the horn on the stock, not in the center wheel. Depicting more escorts. Um, more '1980s photos. Um, yeah. <laughs> But uh, they spend a little bit of time displaying like the rear cargo compartment, a cargo cover, which is extremely rare in these cars. Everyone took them out, threw them away, whatever. Central center console. This is the smaller console. That is the larger one. The larger one. It always comes with a combination of displays. We'll see if it talks about it in the. Uh, later in the book, but uh, it would it would it would have a number of different gauges or warning lights inside this center console. Otherwise, you'd have this kind of skinny one, and it doesn't cover up the handbrake. This one is the full length uh, between the seats along the tranny tunnel. Pretty much goes the full length, and it ends where the folding armrest goes. It folds up and down. This smaller center one it ends right here, just underneath the tip of the hand or handbrake, and then the handbrake. It's um, depending on what year and model we're talking about. Sometimes they can have a small plastic <laughs> trim piece around it, but the the basic cars, the the base models, they won't even have this little uh, mini console here. It'll just be the shift boot into the floor. Sophistication, practicality. You definitely get practicality on all these. Sophistication comes with your trim level. If you're getting a base model, you're not getting squat. And we talk about more of the interior colors. That's a big thing. 83, we still have this type of steering wheel on the base models. And it's, there's absolutely nothing to it. That's, that's not a horn. Keep that in mind. But you don't even get a Ford badge. You get nothing. Uh, standard AM mono radio. Yep. And this is the L series instrument panel, so all you get is 
speedometer, fuel, and uh, coolant temp. That's the AM radio. At least it saves uh, five, five uh, radio stations. World car technology. This probably wasn't the the page to put this on if we're just looking at a base model. But uh, eh, this one's somewhere higher up because it does have at least have a uh, remote mirror. Um, this one down here, that is the base base model mirror. It's what we'd call shaver mirrors. It's just a, a loose pane of glass and you can pivot around a ball uh, sticking your hand through the window, but these ones are remote. You're able to adjust them with a tiny joystick. It was also the big year for the GT, and that's because the GT would have usually the EFI engine but uh, I believe they were all, they also exist with the 1.6 high output, which is what the 82 GT had. But the big thing is these actually all have five speeds. And for 83 through 85, they decked them out pretty good. They all have lower arrow dam with uh, fog lights underneath them. Uh, I believe all the GTs have spoilers, but as do these. 83 would be the first year for these halo headrests. And the GT, typical GT interior was black, tan, or the kind of bluish gray, depending on the year that we're looking at. Uh, but the GTs, they have this blacked out instrument surround. And then 83, all the full instrumentation gauges, they're all orange, which is pretty neat. The EXPs are like that as well. And it talks about the seats some. They are special seats. These are the seats that you'll only find in the GTs and the the sport trimmed out EXPs. Uh, they look like racing seats. They have better bolstering underneath, uh, you, on the back side of your knees, I should say. Otherwise, this portion is pretty much the same across all the cars. And then, like we had said, the unique Halo style headrest. The wagon. The wagon's been around since 81, just like the two-door. And uh, it, it hasn't changed from 81 to 90. The only things that change are the front end design. Eventually they change out the front suspension. And then they change the rear bumper to match um, throughout those years. But body itself never changed. That talks about uh, some of the wagon specs. 27 feet of cargo space, which is actually the, the same as the EXP some way, somehow. Which is quite odd. Um, oh, that that's if you have two people in the back seat. Okay, I see. So 27 cubic feet if you're using your back bench. If you fold your back bench down, you're up to 58 cubic feet. That's a big difference. Uh, folding down that bench, uh, like it says on paper, you are doubling your cargo space, which is pretty neat. So if you're if you're not hauling people, you can plop that down have a lot of room um here more interior options this one looks to be a full vinyl interior which would be pretty rare um or maybe they're hybrids it looks like there's cloth inserts actually yes it's all cloth uh 83 they changed their material patterns and and pretty much all their seats for 83 and it's um i can say that for the exps and the escorts while they may maintain the same exact bun shape top and bottom and some of them will actually have the same exact stitching pattern some of them have a different weave some of them utilize a different material and then uh, some of them if you're getting uh like the cloth or the vinyl ones well uh, how far the cloth goes to the edge will vary. How they pleat them is, is different. Otherwise, dashboard remains the same. In 84, we get a different dashboard. So this is the last year of the square dash. This one's talking about the GLX. With the GLX, here's what you get in that center uh, instrument panel of the center console you get this set of idiot lights i believe if, if you have the gt you would get what the exps have where it's a 
Uh, it's an oil gauge and an ammeter, both of which are practically only um, cosmetic. They really don't function, but at least they're there and you can make them functional. Uh, we talk about all the time and effort that was put into making these cars um, between things like fuel economy, comfort level, uh, trying to have as many features as we can while keeping things affordable. And then we talk about each of the trim models a little bit. This section is actually really neat because you can see the different seats. Because it's, uh, depending on which ones you're looking at, it's a big jump. You could have, I believe these are vinyl high backs. So those are pretty much the base model. Uh, at some point they might have changed these so that they're only cloth in the centers and then vinyl along the sides. GLs, by standard, they get these low backs. These are what most EXPs had in 82, 83. The GLX seats apparently get these kind of hybrid low backs where it's half vinyl, half cloth. And then your GTs, they get these special sport seats. You're welcome to pause and read about those if you like them. Alrighty, um, here, <laughs> this was a pretty big thing in, for the, in the 82 bucks and apparently made its way here. Uh, wind tunnel line, yet, yet no, it's, <laughs> it's not, <laughs> it doesn't have that kind of aerodynamics. See, the EXPs are pretty aerodynamic, but these guys do suffer a little bit. So, more technology and stuff like power plant, suspension, transmissions that are now changed. Um, breaks about the automatic that's been around for three years now. Uh, aerodynamic design, hours of wind tunnel testing. I, sorry, but I'm not seeing it. <laughs> this would be something to cut out of this, get rid of this wind tunnel stuff, put it in the EXP catalogs. They're far more aerodynamic. Um, yeah, we were talking about the new engine that just came out. They're an EFI system. We talk about the engine as a whole because at this point, every single one is a Hemi. And then, of course, the four-corner independent suspension, rack and pinion steering. Talk about the power steering a little bit. Front disc brakes, um, nothing too special there. It's still drum in the rear and all these, but um, I believe in 83 you could have power and manual brakes. Depends on your option. Base model car is going to have manual brakes. But uh, here's one of the better pages. You can actually see all three of the body styles side by side, which is fantastic. And all in the same color, which is even better. Um, but this is pretty much the data page, like it says. You're actually able to compare all these standard features across each of the trim levels. And then on the far right, we talk about some of the um, EPA-related content. Fuel economy, you know, uh, how many barrels of oils these things burn over the next decade, whatever. But here we go. There's a lot here, so we'll... We'll try to go on through this kind of quick, uh, if we can focus for good grief. Okay, so every single one's front-wheel drive. Yep, that's that's Ford trying to brag about what they had standardized. But at the time, it, I suppose it was pretty special. Uh, 1.6, you get that in every car but the GT. When you get the GT, you get the EFI engine is standard. Okay, so you for 83 you can't have the 1.6 high output. Um, and supposedly in 1983 all the 1.6s became the high output engine. Uh, but the best way to tell is to look at your VIN number. If VIN digit 8 is a 4, you do have a high output engine. If it's a 2, you have the base model engine. And although it doesn't say it here, I'm willing to bet that's if in 83 they standardize the high output, you could probably get uh, for a little bit of option clearance, pro probably the smaller, uh, the normal 1.6. I know for sure it's like that in 84 and 85. So I'd be surprised if it's not like that here. Uh, yep. Um, 
<laughs> all this normal stuff. Yeah, you get a, a sealed lead acid battery that you don't have to top off. And yeah, you get electronic ignition. These should be standard things in 83. Four speed manual with overdrive. It's available in every, every or actually it's standard in every car except the GT. GT will only come with five speed. And the five speed is optional in every car, standard in the GT. TR performance suspension. So what that is, it's that is tuned shocks, um, thicker front sway bar, springs might be slightly different. Um, but then the big the big thing is you get the TRX wheels by standard. It says your TRX tires are not available on wagons, and that's. <clears throat> That's something important to note because there's actually photos of wagons out there with those. 13 gallon extended range fuel tank. Yes, 1983. They actually standardized the 13 gallon fuel tank. So if you have an 81 or 82 and you'll most likely only have the 11, 13 was standard or optional on the wagon. But anywho, if you only have a 13, 11 gallon tank, you can go and get the 13 gallon tank from any 83 or newer escort or exp whatever exterior we're talking about the headlights and we show what's available for the air dam uh front air dam standard on oh the gl and higher cars it's only on the base model it'll be empty like this um, but you'll you'll see the black chin spoiler on all the other cars it's very interesting rear spoiler talks about that wheel splats black that's only GT stuff. Uh, black left-handed mirror. That's the shaver mirror we mentioned. Dual sport mirrors. Those are the remote adjustable. Um, there's plenty of other stuff. Um, different B-pillar trim appliques. Black on the GT. Mostly stainless on all the other cars. Interior. Yep, the, the seat thing is pretty interesting. Hold down arm rest that's on every car, but uh, only optional on the base model because the base model um, very rarely had a center console of any sort. So an armrest would uh, look rather out of place. Uh, plenty of other interior options. Some of them vary from tiny stuff. Some of it's pretty impressive. Uh, and we go further on to the right. We actually get into a little bit of technical specifications. So you can see that for the two-door and four-door cars, that all our specs are exactly the same. And that is because the only difference between this car and this car is the B-pillar, the C-pillar, and the two doors. Uh, oh! In the window and the quarter panel because all those kind of fit together but the roof is the same the hatch is the same taillight is the same everything in front of the front door is the same um, the seating position is the same because the floor pan is the same and the rocker is slightly different just to accommodate the different pillar anywho uh something to note is 83 you could still get the smoker windows those are pretty rare and eventually they stopped including them in these cars. Colors and trims, here's what's available. Um, it, so for interior, you could get black. Black is actually kind of rare in escorts and EXPs. I'm not sure why. The red. Red's available in a lot. Uh, same with the tan. Um... Exterior colors, every you could get in any interior you want with a white car. Pretty neat. Talks about some of the two tone paints or the metallic paints that you can get for these. They're available at extra cost. If you have a GT, here's your options you could only get a black interior or a tan interior, and your only exterior colors could be black. Let's uh, zoom, get better focus here. Tan. So you could actually have a tan GT, tan on the outside. You could have red, a uh, slightly brighter red, the bright bittersweet, it's actually an orange, and a light pewter metallic. That one's that one's pretty rare. I believe that's a you know like a metallic 
gold. It's a real gentle gold, partly silver. Talks about some basic maintenance so that you know that when you're getting one of these cars, you're not going to be turning a wrench every week. Option selector. So here's where you go through, and if any option stands out, uh, you'll want to make sure that you're finding it for the uh, right trim. Some of its standard stuff. And here I'll actually show some of these things. Like these smoker windows, E. If you go over to E, pivoting front vent windows. Yep. AC system, rear wiper, which is pretty uncommon. You'll find them mostly on the GLXs, rear defrost. Um, any with a rear wiper have a rear squirter. Cruise control, TRX wheels. Even the map light was optional in these, but standard in the EXP. That's kind of where the EXP shines is when you start looking at all the options in the Escort. All that crap's just standard on an EXP. You know, but that's pretty much everything there is. Um, if you want to view this for free or download it, you are welcome to just visit Ford's Heritage website and uh, type in 1983 Escort. You'll see a few of these. Some will be uh, Spanish or French, some will be English. You're able to view them and download them in perfect scanned color for free. Some because they are going to be better than like mine, <laughs> and then you can view them at their at your leisure. Uh, if you're looking to buy any of these, they're all over eBay, and they're only like two to ten bucks a pop, depending on the condition, location. But they're they're everywhere. <laughs> you won't miss out on much, but catch you later.